Hello, welcome to Table Ready Gaming. I'm Dave, and on today's episode, we're going to build one of the cheapest D&D miniatures I've ever constructed. Like I said in my last video, stores in the United States are filling up with Halloween decorations during October, and these make some really cheap and easy conversions into tabletop terrain and tabletop miniatures. On my last shopping trip, I found these maggots that were on sale for, like, 10 cents for 18. I thought to myself, this is too good of an opportunity not to try to make something with them. So, on today's episode, I made the giant corpse grub. Let's head on down to the hobby bench, and I'll show you what I did. Right, so for this project, I needed my maggots, some Vallejo basing material, and some bases. So I'm going for two different sized monsters in today's build. I'm building a giant grub swarm and individual giant grubs. I decided to base the grubs on 40 millimeter bases and the individual grubs on 20 millimeter bases. These are the same bases I use in all my miniature builds. So while I was building these guys, I started trying to think of how I would use them at the table. I knew I wanted the large swarm to spawn more individual grubs, and I don't think this encounter will truly be over until each of the swarms is completely destroyed. But I also was trying to think of how to introduce these beasties into my world. Where would my players run into them? There were some obvious options, like an old graveyard, or even a Lion King inspired elephant boneyard. But I didn't know how I would incorporate these two things into my current jungle themed campaign. Trying to come up with ideas, I found a bit of fluff about how corpse worms can grow extra large when they eat deceased dragons. I like the idea that the magic infused in these dragons will cause these creatures to grow larger than normal, but I run dragons slightly differently in my world, and I didn't think this really fit. So one night, I was going down a Wikipedia rabbit hole and started reading about whaling in ancient times. While certainly whaling is a controversial topic, I could see a coastal society hunting some large sea creatures for its meats, oils, and skins. My Wikipedia breadcrumb trail led me to read about drift whales, which is when a dead whale would wash up on the coast. While this is seen largely as a huge inconvenience in today's times, in ancient times they were kind of a windfall for a coastal community. So I imagined a giant dead sea leviathan washing up on shore that's unnaturally large, and as merchants, huntsmen, and tanners all rush to the site to collect the bounty, they are shocked as giant grubs start erupting from their payday's carcass, and their horror of what was perceived to be a blessing turns out to be a curse. Plus, this is kind of a throwback to an old XCOM mission, and I love me some XCOM. So anyhow, back to the build. I didn't worry about glue, because my plan was to just allow the basing medium to stick the maggots as it dried. Now during this process, I ran into my first problem. These maggots are made to be makeup for Halloween, and they apparently have spirit gum applied to them so they'll stick to your skin. I tried washing this off, but it was pretty hard to remove. My second problem was the material that these maggots were made from. They have this soft jelly silicone-like plastic texture. I really don't know what it was. And the best way I can describe it is they have the same material as those sticky hand clings that kids throw at windows. And apparently those are vinyl. This means these maggots didn't really have any form to them, and if you handle them too much they start to disform and kind of just turn into a gooey mess. When I opened my second packet of maggots, they weren't as sticky and they were a little bit more firm, so I was kind of hoping these things would just dry out as they were exposed to the air, and perhaps even harden up a bit. So once the grubs were placed on the base, I left them overnight to dry. The next morning though, I found the basing medium had dried up nicely, but the maggots were still soft and still sticky. I didn't think my players would enjoy grabbing slimy minis, even battling the maggots. I want my player characters to roll for disgust, not my players. So I need to find a way to harden up these minis. I tried to simply coat them in a varnish, but this really didn't work out, or do the trick. And they were even soft still, and at times still sticky. But when at first you don't succeed, Try, try again. In the end, I decided the best thing to do was to coat the maggots in super glue and let that dry. While I was doing this, there was certainly vapors coming off the project. The glue was reacting with something. So I would say do this in a well-ventilated area or with a respirator, preferably both. I again let these minis dry overnight. In the morning, I had some rock hard, slime free maggots. Now that's something I never thought I'd hear myself say. So to finish these guys up, I just applied some gloss varnish and some blood for the blood god technical paint from Citadel. 
Well, there you have it. This was a really easy build. And the end result is kind of gross, if I do say so myself. Oh, and as an added bonus, these grubs glow in the dark. I don't know how useful that will be in my D&D games, as the light is kind of important for reading dice results, character sheets, and so on. But one day, I do dream of building an underdark board that is lit entirely with black lights to give the otherworldly appearance. And I'm sure giant grubs could find their way into the underdark. Hey, there you go. Today's build was super simple and kind of easy. In the end, though, I really don't think I could recommend these maggots if you're trying to do this project yourself. Instead, I would suggest going to like a Bass Pro Shop or some sort of fishing supply store and just buying grubs from the fishing bait section. Just make sure there's no hooks or smells added to the bait. That could be uh, unfortunate. We don't want smell-o-vision during our D&D games. Anyhow, like I said, today's video is a little bit shorter, but hey, I still appreciate you watching to the end. Until next time, I'm Dave, this is Table Ready Gaming, and I'll see you in the next video.